they are more at risk from poor air quality and facing the consequence, you know, it could exacerbate their illnesses, their existing concerns and yeah. cause earlier death. Hi, my name is Tanzeed Alam. I'm the Managing Director of Earth Matters Consulting. Um, it's, a, it's my own firm and we specialise on helping clients address the climate crisis and environmental issues. The UAE's air quality level has been put in the category of unhealthy for sensitive groups. Um, and this is one of the key issues for the UAE's national vision for 2021. Um, what exactly is the concern? Why are why is it so concerning here in the UAE? Sure, well, air quality is a global concern. Um, uh, just this year, a study came out that showed that in 2018, 8.7 million people died around the world because of poor air quality and then the health-related concerns that it causes. So, um, and that's been because of the use of coal, oil, and other fossil fuels, essentially. So we, we, when we burn these fuels, it releases pollutants into the air. When people breathe it in, it can affect their health, whether it's cardiac, respiratory problems, and so on. So it's a global concern. And um, in that year, it caused one in five deaths more than one in five deaths globally, all deaths around the world. So in the UAE, obviously they're concerned about this as, a, as an issue as well. And we're in quite a hot and dry climate where naturally there's a lot of dust in the atmosphere as well. So um, your kind of heavy particulate matter, it's called, um, which comes from the desert sometimes and it comes through dust storms. But on top of that, there are man-made sources of pollutants in the UAE as well that come from your tailpipe of your car, for example, or from heavy industry that releases pollutants into the atmosphere that we breathe in and can affect our health. So how are these air quality levels tested and what are, what's kind of the safe limit um, and how often are they tested? Sure. Well, the UAE, um, we're fortunate here that we have a big kind of air quality monitoring network across the country. And there's coordination of that data between the different emirates as well. So the environmental authorities of each emirate have these stations, which essentially kind of monitor and track what the pollutant levels are in the air. But they average out that reading over the course of the day. So you have an average daily exposure of certain pollutants. So um, we know that the World Health Organization sets guidelines. So there are only guidelines for if you exceed a certain threshold each day, then it's classified as unsafe or unhealthy for humans. But if it's below that threshold, you're generally okay. And there's like obviously a spectrum um, that this falls in. So on really good air quality days, something like PM 2.5 might be quite low um, and other pollutants could be quite high. So an air quality index kind of averages all of these out to give you one measure that says whether it's safe, whether it's healthy or not, basically yeah. on the balance of everything that you might that might pose a human health risk. Talking specifically about these sensitive groups, who falls under these vulnerable and higher risk groups and how dangerous can this actually be for them? Sure, it can be really dangerous if it builds up over time. It's a chronic issue. So people with, um, especially the young and the elderly, kind of the most vulnerable, any uh, kind of children kind of age five, six or below are classified as vulnerable. There's also the elderly, people above the age of 60 or 70, for example. Any people with underlying health concerns, like if they have heart disease issues or respiratory illnesses, smokers, for example, um, people with cancer, they, they are more at risk from poor air quality and facing the consequence, you know, it could exacerbate their illnesses, their existing concerns and yeah. cause earlier death. What sort of initiative or small changes can people, regardless of their age, their job, anything like that, what can we incorporate in our day-to-day -day lives to help uh, with you know, improving air quality and improving this issue? Yeah, great question. And you know, it's, it's, it's hard to feel empowered sometimes if you just think it's just me and it's a big industry or the government should be doing more. And the reality is everyone has a little part that they can play. So as an individual, I'd say be informed about air quality, treat it as an issue like you would do when you check the weather each day. You think, oh, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna rain. What's the air quality today? And base your decisions on what you do on that, on that information. Mm -hmm. There's apps out there, like I mentioned, but the Dubai municipality has a website which lists kind of its local air quality reading and gives advice on whether it's good or bad that day. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, what you can do is take change plans based on days when the air quality is bad. So you could, 
instead of doing an outdoor play date for your children, do something indoors at someone's house or um, yeah, go swimming instead of you know going um, you know doing something indoors basically instead of running around outdoors. Um, schools and um, hospitals have an important role here as well on particularly bad days if you get really bad kind of sandstorm coming in when the air quality can be really bad schools could have alert systems which um, say that children shouldn't be playing outdoors that day just because it's unsafe for them at certain times and and hospitals as well should be prepped for more influx of asthma related illnesses and other respiratory illnesses those days so maybe they need to have more staff on hand to deal with people coming in with respiratory complaints so that can enable i guess society as a whole to be more prepared mm -hmm. um and kind of like sometimes you know we get sms alert systems from yeah. from the government you know if it's um, like we happened during covid you know when we were doing the um, the national disinfection program you get an alert to say stay indoors between these hours, yeah. you could have those sorts of alerts coming to people's phones that alert them when it's a particularly bad day. So they should exercise some caution in the outdoor activities that they do. Um, uh, other things that we can probably do are, you know, if you're thinking of buying a car, go for something that's kind of zero emissions. Electric cars, for example, are getting cheaper now and there's more charging stations available. So you can make choices as consumers on have living less polluting lifestyles basically lifestyles that consume less energy and fossil fuels and um, that's other ways in which we could yeah. all take action i mean there is that there is an increase now and they're saying by 2030 you know these more these electric cars are becoming more and more dominating the mm. automotive industry do you feel in your opinion that this is going to reduce um or improve air quality levels as a whole do you feel like this is a really big factor that contributes to to this? Transport is a really big factor. So yes, it definitely would. Mm -hmm. It's not the only factor. So part of the solution also lies in the big polluting industries, your kind of oil and gas and coal. Um, ultimately, we need to move away from using these sources of fuel for our energy, mm -hmm. and that will really help. Um, construction industry has an important role to play. You know, the manufacturing, you know, using cement and concrete and when you're building buildings, there's a lot of kind of materials that are dust that's kind of put out into the atmosphere. So they have an important role to play in looking at alternative materials mm -hmm. that can be used in buildings that reduce the amount of dust and pollution that goes into the atmosphere. So th these different sectors all have a role to play, but absolutely transport is important. Yeah. yeah. Great. Means, well, yeah. thank you so much for being here today. Thank you very much for inviting me. I hope it helps your, your listeners and audience.